Hi folks, it's Dr. Rob Sivers. I am the Carb Addiction Doc. And one of the most common causes of death and, and disease is cardiovascular disease, heart attacks, strokes, heart disease. And yet, of all the diseases out there, it is one of the ones that is readily screened for and yet hopelessly, hopelessly poorly managed by primary care doctors and by cardiologists. The majority of the healthcare system is designed to be reactive to cardiovascular events rather than being proactive about screening you for heart disease. And I can tell you categorically that screening for heart disease has greater benefit to every human being than mammograms, colonoscopies, prostate numbers, than all the other screens for other forms of death. You add all those other screens together and screening for heart disease has greater survival value. So, and very, very poorly done. At most, your PCP and cardiologists are going to order a lipid panel, look at your cholesterol, look at your LDL, and put you on a statin and see you in six months. Ridiculous. Because they don't know if you have heart disease. They don't know if you don't have heart disease. They're not investigating you if you do have heart disease. And they're treating you irrespective of even if you don't have heart disease. So let's break this down. I'm going to propose very naively and very basically a screening test. And then based on the screening test, we then follow an algorithm going forward to determine value as well as strategy. So the first thing is this, that most heart disease can be identified early and we use age 40 unless there are specific higher concerns where this testing can be done early. But in my opinion, every human being should get at age 40 Number one, a coronary artery calcium score, a CAC score. Okay, It's going to tell us right away whether there is plaque in the heart. Now, at 40, you may have very little plaque. Very little plaque. I just had a patient the other day, 40 years old, had a score of 27 or 28. Most people it's negative. That's a negative score. But why would a 40-year-old clean living athlete have a score? Let's go and look at some of the other metrics and maybe modify that. So get that score at age 40, CAC score. Secondly, check your blood pressure. Check your blood pressure every day at the same time for a few weeks to determine what your blood pressure is. And if it's variable or it's continuously above 135 over 85, that is a cause for action. Get an EKG. Electrocardiogram, look at the electrical nature of your heart or get a smartwatch or get an oxygen saturation monitor, but look at your heart rate at rest and look at the rhythm and make sure there are no drop beats. I don't care how fit you are. In fact, my athletes we'll talk about in a little bit next video will be about arrhythmias in athletes. But look at your heart rate, know what it is. You cannot depend on a family doctor to do that. So get a CAC score, screen for arrhythmias, Check your blood pressure, and if there is a significant family history, get an echocardiogram and make sure the structure of the heart is normal. And if you're an athlete, get that checked out as well. You may have an enlarged left ventricle because it's pumping so hard, an enlarged left atrium. Those are all precursors potentially to arrhythmias. So those are the screening tests you do looking at the heart itself. Okay, And then even if everything's negative, you've got a baseline for the rest of your life. Get blood work done. Get blood work done. Your lipid numbers are markers, markers of vascular disease. So we're going to look at triglycerides. We're going to look at HDL, which are the best markers. We'll consider LDL and triglycer and, and total cholesterol. As long as they're high, I'm okay. I don't care why they're high. But HDL triglycerides are important. Look at your blood sugar. Look at your A1C. Look at your uric acid. Look at your protein turnover numbers. Look at your thyroid numbers. Look at your testosterone. All of those independently influence cardiovascular risk. So we get a general metabolic blood work as a screen at age 40. If all those are fine, nothing to be done. So make sure you don't, don't overdo the carbohydrates. Ketone IQ has recently come out with a product. It's this. It's their regular ketone IQ um, uh, ketone supplement, exogenous ketone. But this one 
contains caffeine, okay? And I've been playing around with it. I do get a boost. I've had some people just not like the caffeine. Uh, it gets their heart racing too much. I found value to this. However, here's what intrigued me. This ketone IQ is made from a green tea extract. And the caffeine comes from green tea. And I, man, I didn't understand that. And I went to look at some of the green teas. I, I drink mostly rooibos tea, but I looked at some of my green teas. And the majority of my green teas that I have in my home contain a sizable amount of caffeine. So be very cautious. Look at the green tea you're drinking, especially if you're drinking it between dinner and bedtime when I try not to drink caffeine. Make sure that there is no caffeine there. Don't be fooled and know the product because this, this ketone IQ was an aha moment for me. Now, the green tea ketone IQ is something I use from time to time in the morning. I've been playing around with it as a surrogate for my first cup of coffee on particularly on run days for me. And I've noticed that it's a, it's a really, really cool thing to run on early in the morning. There's no way I'm going to take this in the evening. But look into the green tea. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. I know other teas do. But check out your green tea and make sure it isn't laced with caffeine. If anything is positive, if anything is a concern, if your CAC score is above 80, the first intervention, or if you've got arrhythmias, take a baby aspirin a day. Take a baby aspirin a day. If the results are negative, don't, but take a baby aspirin a day. It's going to reduce your risk of clots. Okay? But then we need further testing. So let's assume that your plaque level is above 80. And I use 80, which is lower than Art Agatson uses. It's called the Agatson score. He created it because I've had a few patients in their late 30s, early 40s with a strong family history have enough of a stenosis. In other words, all the calcium is over a short distance that they had compromised to, of blood flow to their heart. And they all required, three of them required stents. So I set a threshold of 80. If you're 80 or above and you're young, you want that investigated because it should not be that low. And the first test I would do would be a stress test. Could be an exercise stress test, could be a nuke med stress test, or a pet stress or a stress echo. There's a variety of different stress tests. Your cardiologist will know which one to order, but get a stress test, which tells us about your immediate risk of cardiovascular flow, of blood flow to your heart when your heart is beating fast. And a stress test tells us whether there is electrical disease before symptoms. Here's the bizarre part. The cardiologist says, oh, you're asymptomatic. You don't need a stress test. Well, hell, the majority of heart disease that's not, not nicotine related occurs without symptoms. We are taught in medical school diabetes results in asymptomatic heart attacks. So how the hell can your cardiologist be waiting for a symptom before they do the test that is supposed to screen you before you have symptoms? So get a stress test. They may do CT angiograms and other things. The CT angiogram as a screening tool is not very effective because ultimately stress test and CAC score are screening tests to see if you need the gold standard test, which is a, uh, uh, a coronary artery catheterization, a cath, an interventional test. So the CTA is a radiation exposure you don't need. It's not going to add information to us. Stress test is positive. You go for a cath. Stress test is negative, positive CAC score. You go on an aspirin. We look in the blood work for comorbidities. We may add a GLP-1 if you've got inflammation related to glucose. We may add a colchicine if you've got inflammation related to uric acid. Those are ancillary medications we may add. If you've got um, a positive CAC score, we then repeat it in 18 months to two years to look at the trajectory. CAC score is flat, we're good. CAC score is rising, that's a big cause for concern. Flat CAC score that's positive, about a 1% heart attack risk over the course of a year. Rising CAC score, greater than 15 to 20% increase, can double your heart attack risk. You can go up to 50% risk of a heart attack in the ensuing uh, year, especially if you've got a positive stress test along with that. So that's where we intervene with the, with the cat. And you may or may not need a stent. You may or may not find, oh, no, we were wrong with the other assessment. 
But that's the gold standard test. You may even need a bypass graft. But that's the algorithm. If you have electrical disease, arrhythmias, PVCs, even if they're benign, oh, don't worry about it, you're early. Go and see an EP specialist, an electrophysiologist. I've had many people, in particular athletes, where the doctor, oh, wow, you look fit, you look wonderful, I'm sure you're fine. They make an assumption based upon the cover of the book, how you look, oh, you're a distance athlete, oh, you're fine. You can't, they imagine that you cannot have heart disease. Kip Chipange died at 42, an elite marathon runner, died of a heart attack because he was blown off, blown off because he was too fit to die. So please, especially if you're an athlete and you have an arrhythmia, you may have a zero CAC score, you want both. If you have an arrhythmia, even early PVCs, early, early low heart rates, bradycardia with a drop beat here and there, go and see your EP physiologist to determine the nuances of that. A regular cardiologist is unlikely to pay sufficient attention to this. They have the knowledge, but they're not going to pay attention to it. So in the next segment, we're going to talk specifically about arrhythmias that are very serious in distance athletes and in anybody with a low heart rate. Please watch that segment. This segment, this video was all about what the algorithm is for cardiovascular care. And if you do have um, plaque in your heart, plaque in your coronary vessels, please, as a foundation, change your diet. Get rid of the carbohydrates and increase your fat content, increase your, sat, your, your, your salt content, and manage your blood pressure very tightly. And if you can prevent heart disease, that is the ideal. But if you already have it at age 40 or in your 40s, make sure that you get tested even if you're asymptomatic. And the sad part is that insurance companies now demand in order to get the test done that you have symptoms. So remember, if you ever get short of breath or if you ever have a little bit of chest pain, you might want to mention that to your doctor when you see them and tell them that you're worried about it. Because they have to have something that they can write in the diagnostic code to say, we're getting a stress test because this guy gets short of breath on exertion, because he gets chest pain. Because we're not set up for prevention. We're set up for therapeutics. And by the time you need a treatment, it's too late. I hope this changes your thinking. Help your cardiologist to do right by you.